Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we come into your presence this morning, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for joining us. Lord, there'd be no reason for us to even be here if you didn't. Amen. We'd be better off watching whatever season of sports it is right now. But Lord, you, you are here with us, and you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, this morning for just the right just to come here and gather. Bless the music. You've already blessed the fellowship, Lord. Bless the hearts of the, of the givers, of the receivers, and all those who are here to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tempted and tried with a
time. Good job. Good job. Thank you. I used to do that. So I wore my boots. Yeah, I'll stuff in there. You're hot. I'm hot. My mic's hot. What? Yeah, right. I did? My, my mic's hot, Wayne. Okay, Gio's mic's hot. <laughs> Jim's going to use one this time. Well, good morning, campers. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man, you guys look so good. <laughs> Glad to see y'all here. You're talking about me, right? <laughs> who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> right, <talk> about that. <laughs> oh, first on the list here, looks like we have Vietnam War Remembrance Day. No, I remember. I'll, re I'll be referencing that when I get up there. Okay. You would be a good choice. <laughs> Um, Bible studies, so kind of big on Bible studies around here, uh, for hopefully the obvious reason. So at 6 p.m. every Wednesday, we are doing uh, Hosea, Pastor Pastor Wayne there, that's his Bible study. Um, and 10-15, uh, of course, you're here at church, so this is Sunday service. 8.45, we're doing Mark, Brother Don back there, awesome Bible study. I don't cook. Um, Janice or Diane, I don't know who's going to do the children. Janice, good morning and thank you for doing our children's ministry. It's to sign up for pop-up for Easter Sunday. Uh, second, uh, second Wednesday, uh, 3 p.m., Board of Directors meeting. That would be this Wednesday, right? No. no. Next month. Oh, next, next month. Next Wrong month. month. Wrong month. That's all right. Your heart is right. Common for me. Um, second Saturday, fellow uh, men's fellowship, also next month. And uh, third Saturday, 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. Also or p.m. Depending on which we want to do it. Oh, Amen. Also next month. Also next month. <laughs> women's fellowship. Um, and every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Women's Bible study there at Cowder's house. Um, and Joni is uh, is leading that. Joni Fox, and uh, they're doing the Truth Project, which remind we're. We're thinking about doing that with our up here in our group up here in the mountain up here. Um, I mean, seems where nowadays everybody seems to have their own idea of what truth is. It's good to have it involved in a project now. Yeah. And a big thank you for those that worked hard to clean up and organize the family house here, the church. Thank you for organizing that. Amen. And uh, of course, men, you guys uh, will be framing here at the pantry. Monday the 28th and uh, Tuesday concrete. the 29th. Okay, we're, we're not, we're pouring concrete, oh, okay. but that's different than framing, right? It's yeah. It's different than framing. <laughs> don't just play little. dumb. Who's trying to say you don't know anything? Uh, I don't play dumb. We have been blessed with, with people, with people that are going to be helping to pour the concrete. So our part of pouring the concrete is pretty much stay out of the way. And uh, yeah, but we are pouring the rest of the concrete. And we've got some walls we're going to start putting up. Yeah, the truck to unload. And a truck to unload, <laughs> two trucks to unload. We need a lot of help. So if you're available, come on out, out and help us build the pantry, put up walls, unload trucks, and watch people work doing the concrete. Do you guys get all that? <coughs> yep. Well, Perry's not here, so Pastor Wayne? This is seat this is from you? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. CTI trucking is hiring twenty dollars an hour starting. Uh, what is it? Oh, you have to have a drug test. Must pass the drug test. We're out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, full medical. Anyway, call call Bert or C. Oh, 
Truck driver, truck right? Driver. Truck driver. Uh, mechanic. Oh, mechanic. Road crew. <laughs> mechanic, <laughs> road crew. Um, anyway, they need help over at CTI Truck. Where is CTI? Right here. Right there. There. Oh, it's the one on the, yes. oh, on the know, left, know, left know, side of the street. Okay. Know, okay. Know, okay. <laughs> anyway, and if, you, if anybody's interested in a job and qualified, see Shirley. Um, well, Oh, yeah. call. Okay. call that number. <laughs> well, well taxi, you can give them that you number. You better get the check. I think you have to talk yeah. to Is there a CDL required for that? Probably. Yeah, for the yeah. truck yeah. CDL. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're going to drive a truck, I'm sure it is. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But if, you, if you're not driving a truck, just working on them, yeah. You can walk on them. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. 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 Oh, it does. Oh, there's a prayer. Uh, yeah. Jay, Jay also mentioned, mentioned that we have the raffle going on and our garage sale coming. Okay. <laughs> for the for the food camp. Perry's not here today, and they usually give it to him while I'm practicing the guitar. So I don't know anything Move about back. all this stuff, but I do know what's going on. Are you sure? You need to read that too. Okay. And then give it back to me. Andrea Reed. <laughs> Laura's niece. Okay, Laura. Laura's not here, is she? Laura had to leave. Okay. The cats had a kitten. Had emergency C section. Oh, that's uh, serious. Ooh, okay. Baby not breathing. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Wow. Good. Serious, everybody. Um, they flew her to Denver. Flight. Let's just stop right here. Okay. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. I don't know this situation, Lord, but we're asking your spirit to hear us. Hear exactly what we're doing and why we're doing. We're praying for this, this prayer request in front of us. I know all prayer requests are serious, Lord, but this one just touched my heart, Lord. So I'm asking you to come alongside those believers in here that are praying for this little baby and praying for that mother, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes you just got to go right into prayer. Um, you want okay, you can have that back. Thank you. What you reminded me of? Oh, Linda Troxell. Linda Troxell. Many of us know her, some maybe not. She moved away about a year ago, uh, and we miss her. But uh, she's having water around her lungs, and they think it might be cancer. Around her heart and oh, around her, spot around her, her heart and spot on her lungs. We. Her heart the, 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 the ha, her lung, her uh, right lung. It has it water has a, around it. No, it has a spot on it. The, oh. the heart has water around it. Oh, yeah, right. There's water around her heart, spot on her lung. Sounds real familiar. It's not girl. good. It's not good. Uh, we love Linda, and she'll be on our official prayer list henceforth. So, uh, so that's one thing we want to lift up. Somebody hand me a prayer request there. Of course, we always want to lift up our, our country, the stuff that we're going through. But let's just kind of include the world, shall we? This world is in a dilemma right now. And it's one thing to say, well, God's bringing this up because we're approaching the end times. It's another thing to pray for situations because we are to continue until he comes. That means continue praying for people and their situations. Just because there's a war, you can't just say, oh, that's what God's bringing forth to this world. No, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars right up to the very end. Right. These are nothing but birth pains. But anyway, we need to pray for our military, our first responders. Uh, our son, as you know, is a fireman. Uh, and they're, they're these people that go out and protect us, the firemen, the policemen, the military, they always need our prayers. So we lift them up before your throne for today. Um, I do want to, I do not know Billy Smith and Teresa, I'm sure I've seen them in around the town, many of us do know them. They had a fire, and we don't know the circumstances of that fire or exactly what's going on, but we know that they had a fire, and that's well, not so a nice they thing. Actually, they had two fires, there was an initial fire. Then it broke back out again. No, it broke into a new area. A brand new area. Yeah, yeah they had two RVs, or one trailer, one RV. The trailer caught fire while they were in town. They had nothing on. When they got a phone call, they hurried back. Then they went and stayed at Harry and Eileen. 
Okay. And then they got another caller on midnight. That's the other RV. buildings were going down. Hot fire and first, it it wasn't the said. same fire that sprung up again. So something's. Uh, fire marshal said it's two separate fires, not related. Two separate fires. Right. Something's wrong there. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's my three guess. fires in one week. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, if right. something's not right, it's the victims we pray for. So, yeah. And we're going to. Um, Carol Adholtz, I guess her shoulder is getting better. She had the same surgery I'm going to have here in about three weeks. Uh, so I'm going to have to talk to her and find out how much pain she's in. A lot. A lot. A lot. That's not good news. <laughs> of course, Audrey's going to be with the Lord. Um, and Carl's going through it over there, so we keep Carl in prayer. Don't need to pray for Audrey anymore. Understand that? We don't pray for the dead. Because the dead in this church aren't dead. We don't die dead. dead. We die alive. alive. That's yes. right. Die alive. Don't die dead. No. Amen. Uh, Amen to that. Next, is it next Sunday we're going to do a little memorial for Daniel? Or this uh, Sunday after? Uh, Sunday after. Okay, two weeks. We're going to do a small little memorial here on Sunday in lieu of the worship praise and worship. We're going to do, you know, a lot of us don't know Daniel, but we know Gloria and Marshall, right? Yes. And it's for the living that we do these memorials. And she's asked if we could just take some time on a Sunday before they leave. And we're going to do a little memorial for her son, Daniel. He was here for several weeks, a few years ago, yeah. <coughs> Terry Underhill's here. Yay! Yay! And Anna is yeah. not going to be here in another week. Is it? Am I right? Next week I leave, yeah. And, and the party that was planned for her today is canceled because Warren got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so as you go through this list, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. We give this out for a reason. You know what the reason is? Come on, somebody. What's the reason? So, we so that it? you can pray. So you can pray. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes people, Pastor, I don't know what to pray for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a good thing. Start with this. Yeah. Then take it into anything else you want. Start with the USA. You can start right there. That's start right. right. Oh, by the way, we have a guest here today. His name is Jerry, right? And he's got a little Bible study out in the desert. Um, uh, out of how far is it out? Just past the nine mile mark. Just Whoa. past the nine mile. That's not too far out. Up there at the you guys have to go back. That's a Ponderosa. Ponderosa. Anybody know where that's at? Okay. So yeah. So anyway, he's here to spy on us and <laughs> see how we're doing. Now, I ran into him in the post office and, and uh, seemed like an okay guy. We'll have to judge him later. <laughs> You're not uh, to judge people. Remember that all the sign. It's a sign I put up, isn't it? Don't judge someone because they sin differently than you. Exactly. Because right. we're all sinners. <laughs> but he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. Amen. 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 If you know him, he'll forgive you. Saved by grace. It's the only way I know. There's no. Anyway, we're. You're ignoring me. Oh yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you're the you're the. Um, Some guy, politician. The politician. <laughs> Janice and I are voting members of the county Republican Party, but we need a petition to get on the ballot of the upcoming election. So if you're registered to vote in Yucca. I'm going to pass this petition through the first page is me, the second page is Jim. We just need to gather 10 signatures. Yeah, and it's very important that we as a church keep a politician who goes to the... On the Holly Board of Supervisors. But he's one-fifth of running the entire county, so sign the petition. Okay. Well, and keep on his good side. We also have a potluck list going around. Oh, potluck list going around for Easter Sunday. Uh, to sign up for what you're thinking about bringing, and uh, we'll do. You're going to be gone next Sunday, right? But I will be making something, and I will be giving it to someone I can trust. <laughs> <laughs> Not to eat it. Not to eat it. <laughs> okay. Come on, you guys are taking too much time up there. I'll have to fire Perry. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We've already lifted up that mother and that uh, young daughter that's being airlifted. So, Father, we're we're lifting them up again. Yes. But, Lord, we're we're also asking, Lord, that you come along beside us, Lord, as we we lift up our our good friend, uh, Linda Troxell, Lord. 
she still comes to this church for prayer. I pray that she's in a good yes. fellowship where she's at. The Lord, she's asking for our prayer. And we join her yeah. right now in her yeah. time of need. And speaking of need, Lord, we've got a whole world out there in need of you right now. Yes. And I know that you use tribulation, Lord, to draw people closer to you. And I know that a great tribulation is had in this world, but you said in this world we will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, as, as well, we move closer and closer to that, we see things happening, Lord, that are distressing to us, because that's what tribulation does. It distresses us. And we pray our way through it. There is no way we can fight our way through a tribulation, but we can pray our way through it. Mm -hmm. We lift up our, our men and women that go out there and protect us, Lord, the military, the firemen, the policemen, and and Lord, we lift up what's happening in the Ukraine right now. Yes. Oh. And we ask, Lord, for, for you to step in and you do the things that need to do to protect those people that, that you know that are yours and those people that will be yours. Don't don't let anybody die dead over there. Yes. Please, in oh. Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up the people that had the fires here, both Billy and Teresa. We lift up Carol and the pain that she's going through with that shoulder, Lord. It doesn't look like she, her shoulder's big enough to have another shoulder put in it, but Lord, we love her so much, and we just pray, Lord, that she gets through this pain and, and on back to us, Lord. As we, and we, we lift up our Carl, Lord. I... I he might be trying to act tough, but we know that he's missing Audrey. And so we, we lift him up before your throne. And say, Lord, Lord, give him the peace that passes all understanding. It can only come from your throne, Lord. It can't come from somewhere else. And Lord, as we continue to pray, we, we continue to pray for our Gloria, Lord. A mother does not get over losing a son overnight. And so, Father, we, we lift up Gloria and even Marshall, Lord, as, as she continues on her healing process. Even in your word, you give a time for, for grieving, Lord. Uh, so, Father, get her through this grieving period, and then we'll never forget Daniel, but Lord, and this church will never forget Gloria. So, Father, we just lift her up to before your throne. Now, Lord, as we proceed, Lord, I ask again for your Holy Spirit just to be with us. Bless this morning, Lord, because it's about you, because of you, and for you. Go before us in everything we say, everything we do here today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mike, you get the deacons to come forward. What are we doing on this national swing? National Vietnam. Oh, I'll talk about it. I can't change the book. <laughs> okay, I, I say this every week, or at least I tell Perry to say this anyway, every week. We don't need any money. Okay? We're doing just fine. Uh, when Barbara runs out of money, that's when I'll start <laughs> begging for money from you guys, okay? Right now, we don't need any money. What you're putting in here is because you have a heart to want to supply this church. And this church gives back out that money. We have needs out there in the community. Uh, and if we have the money, we're going to help people in the community with the funds that we have in this church. We've done it over and over again, and uh, that's just how we work things here. When we needed money to build this building, it just kind of came from heaven, like, like God put manna down. We don't owe a penny on it. Same thing is happening over at the pantry. And, and there's, there's a good one. If you should just, you know, you have money and you just want to give it to the pantry, just put it in an envelope and say pantry only. Whatever you want to do, because that's the ministry that I believe this church supports. So, we don't need your money. What we need is your heart. Okay? So give from your heart because God wants to bless the, the true giver. And Lord, we lift up the finances of this church, the pantry, and just anything that you want put in this bag. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. 
I do want to address something. Mike called it to my attention. Yes, it, it will be Easter Sunday. Yeah, the potluck. Yeah. April 17th. Day before your surgery. <laughs> yeah, the day before my death. Um, I don't know much about it, Mike. Do you know much about it? No, I just saw it on the VFW calendar. I know that Trump uh, signed the executive order. So Trump signed an executive order to make March 29th uh, Vietnam Veterans Day. But in, in Arizona, that's a bill that I passed. That oh, you passed that? that? In 2008. So you tell us about Yeah, so why don't you <laughs> come up here and tell us a little bit about it. For you new people, these are these are local politician and Hitler. And and Deacon that I love. Explain what it is. Oh, the, the former mayor of Bullhead City was a guy named Jack Hagan, and Bullhead City had a, a Vietnam veterans memorial service that they did. And I was up there talking to him. He said, "You know, Arizona had never declared a Vietnam veterans memorial day." And he goes, we should do that. I go, that's a great idea. So what I, I was a state senator at the time, so I just drafted up a bill, and uh, we went ahead and ran that through the legislature and passed it. So that declared that the 29th of March is, the, is Vietnam Veterans Day in Arizona. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that it took that much time for us to actually do it. You know, that, that we just Probably never been 50 years. <laughs> It's only been 50 yeah, years. and it's which is ridiculous that it went that long before we actually did it. But I will always credit Jack. It was Jack's idea. I just did what Jack asked me to do. But, Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. All right. Keep that in mind on on uh, the 29th, which Sign is the petition. <laughs> 29th of uh, March. Uh, just remember, remember a veteran. Okay. I'm one. Mike's one. Jim's one. I, Jerry's I know one. Well, you're one. Ter okay. Terry. Ter <laughs> She's going to kill me one of these days. With those we always girls. leave our lady out. <laughs> Didn't say that. Terry's one. That's right. There's a lot of veterans in here. Uh, by the way, how many people in this building are veterans? Huh? All right. So Jerry's one. Jerry heads up our American Legion. So, yeah, and uh, a lot of us are Vietnam veterans. So. Oh, Paul. Anyway, yeah. worship team. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's fine. I just wanted you to see the message. Yeah. Okay. Come over here. Got word that our good friend Paul Desio, you remember Paul, the one that wrote the uh, Scrooge play and came here and helped us with it. He has a ministry going to hospitals and uh, he's a chaplain. When I met him, he was an inmate at uh, Arizona State Prison. He's now a chaplain. And uh, I consider him part of my fruits of life. So we need to pray for his ministry. I don't know what's going on, but Lord, I lift him up to you, and I ask in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that you bless his ministry. Change my heart.
You know, that power saved my eternal soul. Amen. Amen. Nothing else did. Good there? Yeah. I don't remember anything else stepping in. That's right. No. Praise God. You know, when we sing that song, I like the word power. And when you say power, I like everybody go, good power, power, power. Be powerful when you're sick. Yeah, power. Woo! This is Perry's song. But... What's wrong with Perry? His mouth. Oh, his mouth. You said his mouth was hurting. Huh? I was wondering if you were slapping him around or what. <laughs> I did. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. Worship your holy name. Sometimes we forget that. So, Father, be with us now, Lord, as we bring forth your word. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Chris. <laughs> I realize what I do. Whenever I use this, this place for somebody. Dismiss the children. Oh, the children are dismissed. I took it down there with me and almost left it down there. Then I go looking for it and I don't remember no time. <laughs> I was blaming Chris earlier for sticking the wrong thing in my bulletin. Only to find out it was me. So I apologize to him in front of the whole congregation. Of course, you guys knew it was me anyway. We're going to finish. There's a fault in California called Wayne's Fault. Yeah, Wayne's Fault. <laughs> I lived on it too. They called it San Andreas, Sandy called it Wayne's Fault. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to finish this little mini series that we've been doing on Matthew chapter 24 uh, today. And in doing so, I will be repeating a lot of the same scriptures, referencing them, that is, that we've been studying. And there's quite a bit. There's quite a bit. The Disciples came to Jesus in Matthew 24, and they said, Show us, Lord, when will these things be, and what will be the signs of your coming? Now, I made a statement early on in the first part of the series, and I said that the second coming of Jesus, and this isn't earth shattering, most people know it, but we forget it. The second coming of Jesus is actually done in two parts. Okay? Yes. And too many people get involved in Old Testament theology and this whole replacement theology thing where somehow we have replaced the nation Israel. That's just not the case. The church never replaced Israel. The church is a separate entity. We are the bride of Christ. Uh, Israel is like our big sister, if you will, however you want to look at it. But God will never desert his people, Israel. That's right. Uh, and, but he has a different promise to them than what he has to us. So the second coming of Christ is actually going to be done in two stages. We all know this. Uh, and the rapture of the church, and of course, the second coming of Jesus. The rapture is when Jesus comes for his bride, the church. We'll go through that a little bit more today. Yes. And, the, and the second part is when Jesus comes as Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Amen? Amen. And he'll set up his kingdom at that time. And of course, we know from Revelation chapter 20 that we will also be with him. We will be government workers so for sorry. Christ. Um, and for a thousand years, we will reign with Christ. Okay? Pretty simple stuff. Okay? But people get it confused. I always want to keep that, keep that in the background. Uh, and I know there's some people up here who weren't here when I started this series. Um, so they came to Jesus and they said, what will be the signs of your coming? Jesus started talking about, well, there's going to be wars, famines. Uh, pestilence, earthquakes in various places. And he said, but that's just the beginning of sorrows, okay? He didn't say the end is, is, is at that point. He said, this is just the beginning of birth pangs. I believe that we are sort of living in that period of time right now. We are experiencing some of the early birth pangs, if you will, early sorrows that are leading up to this time of what is spelled out in the Old Testament in Jeremiah 30 verse 7, as a time of Jacob's trouble, a time that Daniel refers to as the seven, 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 the last of the seven seventies. There we go. And there's a dangling little seven year period of time that was dedicated to who? To the church? No, that was dedicated to your people, Israel. Okay? What, Daniel was a Jew. Jew. Thank you. See, I talked serious on Daniel. If we only <laughs> learn just that much, we've got it down pat. Daniel was a Jew. And when he says, your people, uh, Daniel, he's talking about the Jewish nation. He's not talking about the church. The church didn't exist in the days of Daniel. Right. I, I know when we go to, to over the, there with the kids, if you want to sit in with them, fine. They'll be drawing pictures of Daniel and saying Daniel was this great little Christian guy. Usually he's a small child, but over there. But he wasn't. Uh, Daniel was a Jew who was... Uh, basically a slave of Nebuchadnezzar's, but he was also running the country. So, anyway, don't want to go way too deep into Daniel. 
Daniel was a Jew, and those times were dedicated for his people, Israel. That seven-year period of teaching. Anyway, the final teaching, if we read Matthew, we don't have it printed for us, but uh, final teaching, Jesus says, this gospel, the end will come, okay? And this is a definite sign. The last definite sign is that this gospel must be preached throughout the whole world. Right. Okay? So I read my Bible and I find out that the last time that the gospel is being preached is in the middle of this thing we call the Great Tribulation. Because God sends two witnesses down. And they're in Jerusalem, okay? And, and they're going to preach down in Jerusalem for three and one half years. 1,260 days to be exact. I mean, God gives us the exact amount of time that they're going to be down. And they're doing what? They are witnessing to the truth. Right. They are witnessing to the truth. These are the two witnesses that we read about in the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Okay? Now, we've covered this. I'm not going to go deep into any of this, because this is stuff we've covered in the last three weeks. So I'm just refreshing our, our memory to get to the point that I want to show everybody today. But after three and a half years, the beast, the Antichrist, kills them, and they lie in the street for three and one half days, dead. And the whole world is looking at them. Of course, when this book was written, people were wondering, how are they going to see these people in Jerusalem? But we know well how they'll see it via satellite. Okay? They're going to see these people in the middle of the town of, of Jerusalem on the streets, lying there dead. Then God is going to raise them from the dead in front of the whole world. And these are the people that have been preaching the gospel, and they are the last ones that will preach the gospel. Jesus says, then the end will come. You see him on CNN. <laughs> What's that? See him on CNN. Oh, yeah, watch him on <laughs> CNN. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna take uh, all the other places off. Yeah. <sighs> now I want to point, now we're getting to something that's critical. I want to point something out. Who's going to kill them? After three and a half years in, who's going to kill him? I just said it. The beast. Yeah. The beast. That means he had to have been there for those first three and a half years. For one thing, when Daniel says, that referring to this same person, that this same person would make a treaty or a covenant with Israel, with many really, I think it's going to involve the whole world, for a period of seven years. There's that dangling seven year period of Daniel. But in the middle of that seven years, by the way, the middle of seven years is 1,260 days or three and one half years. So that's the exact same timeline as to when they're going to kill the, uh, these witnesses. So that beast, the Antichrist, has got to be alive from the beginning of that seven years right up to the end till Jesus returns. Everybody understand that? So we've got him on the earth during that period of time. But he didn't just kind of walk in off the streets and say, um, oh, by the way, I'm the Antichrist. I'm going to uh, make a treaty with Did he? During the period of time that we're looking at right now, we're going to see the rise of a world-renowned leader. Everybody's going to like him. He's not going to be a Putin. I guarantee you it's not Putin. I, I'm pretty sure it's not uh, Biden. That's for sure. <laughs> and Trump no. does that thing on the computer too much. No. Okay, so it won't be him either. I don't know who it's going to be. I, nobody in this room knows who it's going to be. But I will tell you this, that a world leader is going to come on the, on the scene. He's going to make a treaty with Israel in, for a seven-year pact, and that begins the clock a ticking. Yeah. Okay? When that happens, the clock begins to tick. And that means that... Watch it. If we are around during that period of time, now I don't preach that because... I'm a pre tribber. Uh, yeah. But there's cases to be made for both sides, and we don't kick anybody out of the church that disagrees with me. We just send them over with the kids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> poor Diane. <laughs> no, I have to bring this in, this series to an end, otherwise I start losing customers. Uh, hey, I firmly believe that that man is running around today. 
I don't know who he is. And I don't know if there's anything we can even do about him because he's destined to be here. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. He's here to bring a time against the nation Israel because God is not done with the nation Israel. Come join me on Hosea. Uh, yeah, come join me on Hosea or any of the uh, last prophets as we go through the, the minor prophets on Wednesday night. No, God's not done with Israel. God's not done with Israel. And they're coming into a period of time whereby when they come through this period of time, they will know who Christ is. In fact, you get into the book of Revelation, you will find that God will uh, mark out 12,000 Jews. 100 for a total of 144,000. 12,000 from each tribe. And this is problematic because at this point in time, nobody knows what happened to the last 10. Whatever happened to the lost tribes of Israel? Okay? There's theories out there. But I'm telling you who knows exactly where they are. God knows exactly who they are. And it's during that period of time that God will come along and he will seal. I don't, I'm not going to have you turn to all these places. But you can look this up for yourself. He will seal 144,000. And that is the only promise to anybody in the book of Revelation, which we studied in this church for a year and a half, almost as much time it took Don to get through the first chapter of Romans, uh, <laughs> for a year and a half. And there's no promise in there for anybody. What's that guy's name in the, in the movie, Buck? Uh, huh? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's behind behind behind. There's no promise in there that he's going to save anybody out who accepts Jesus Christ during the Great Tribulation. In fact, there's a promise that they will be dead. Okay? That the beast will kill them. Which is still far better than serving the beast. But nonetheless, that's getting off on the side track. Um, God will seal 144,000 and those people will be sealed. <coughs> the beast will not be able to touch them. He will not be able to kill them. Amen. That beast being the Antichrist. What picture did we decide to put up here? Ah, oh, those. That's what I'm going. Would you pick me up, Walter? Yes. I got it. Oh, okay. Um, I should remember. Yeah, we Where cleaned all your bottoms out from under there. <laughs> so we established two things. The Antichrist is going to have to be present, and it's a three and a half years into that seven year period of time that we that we will see something really bad happen. What are we going to see really bad happen? Hmm. Read your book of Revelation. Three and a half years into it. Okay? Something really bad happens. God pours out his wrath on planet Earth. And why does he do that? Because that man is going to proclaim himself to be God. And he's going to do that in the temple of God. Right? Yes. right? Where's the temple? Jesus. Yeah, but where's it at now? There isn't one. There isn't one, is it? No. Oh, you show me the temple. You show me the temple, I'll show you a, a mosque. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's right, on the side. it's right on the same site. That's right, Jerry. It's right on the same site. Uh, of course, you guys know where the temple is? Here. Yeah. In your heart. Right, it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. God. But this is saying something a little different. This man, this beast, is going to come walking in there and he's going to proclaim himself to be God. You can take it however you want, but I see a physical temple. So when's it going to be built? It's got to be built right around the time, the first three and a half years, does it not? Yes. And here's this brand new temple. And the Jews are all set and ready to start having their sacrifices. And guess who comes in and says, you know what? We're going to do things a little different in this temple. We're going to worship me. All literal hell breaks loose in Matthew 24. It says, if when you see the, the abomination of desolation, get out of Dodge. Actually it says, you who are in Judea get out of God, because this is pronounced against the Jews. Yes. Anybody here live in Judea? Mm -hmm. Hope you're gone by that time. Okay. <coughs> Maybe. Could be. I, I think we're gone by that time. But I think this is all about the Jews. 
But listen, listen to it. Jesus said, when you see this abomination of desolation, which is spoken about by Daniel the prophet, leave town. There's going to be such a bad time on earth, he said, after that, that if he didn't shorten that period of time, no flesh would survive. It's not like the little wars that are going on around the earth, like you're going to take a rifle out there in the desert and you're going to be able to uh, shoot people and protect your food. It's going to be a horrible time on earth. Your water might even become undrinkable. Your food, uneatable. It's going to be the most horrible time. But you know what's really weird? People think, oh, that's what happens. This, a lot of this happens some, I mean, during the first three and a half years. Yes. Yes. And that might be what leads up to a time of peace. Because people are going to say, when everything gets solved, this Antichrist rises on the scene and makes everything right and builds that temple, all of a sudden... People are saying, wow, finally, peace and safety. And when people are saying peace and safety, all literal hell breaks loose. Yeah, sure. When you see that abomination of desolation. Now, I got in trouble, a lot of trouble, when I was a chaplain at the state prison. Okay, I was teaching on this very subject, and, and I mentioned the abomination of desolation. Okay, And there was a white guy sitting over here that says, that said, you talking about the Obama nation? <laughs> a black guy got up and hit the white guy, and all of a sudden I had a riot on my hand, and I got called into the warden's office. Say, Chaplain, what are you doing preaching on politics? That's Ron's job. <laughs> I said, I didn't talk about I talked about an abomination of desolation. It's not, has nothing to do with Mr. Obama. <laughs> sure. Well, maybe. <laughs> Might want to chew on that for a while. <laughs> yeah, just a little. Yeah. Back in Facebook, too. <laughs> Daniel said some other things, and we talked about it too. By the way, all this is review. Okay, just to bring everybody up to speed. Remember what Daniel says? At that time, my people, Daniel was a Jew. Jew. At that time, your people, Israel, will uh, be revived, will be resurrected. They will be coming up out of the grace. He's going to resurrect the entire nation of Israel. We covered that. Yes. Daniel 12, 1. Okay? At what time? At that time. What time are we talking about? I'm not sure if it's mid-trip. I'm not sure if it's the first one, first going to a time of Jacob's trouble. I, I kind of believe that it could be either one. I don't know. The scriptures don't really say. It just says, at that time. But then he went on to say, at that time, for there will be a uh, time such as the world has never seen or will ever see again. He spoke the same words that Jesus would later reiterate in Matthew 24, that this great tribulation period of time is coming. That came first from Daniel onto Jesus, and Jesus believed a lot in, in Daniel. I, I've heard people tell me, I believe in Jesus, but, but Daniel, the prophecies of Daniel are, are too accurate, and they can't believe in the prophet Daniel. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> But you believe in Jesus, but you don't believe in the prophet Daniel. And Jesus said, you know, the prophet Daniel, when you see the things said by the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Yes. Uh, and talk about the abomination of desolation. <laughs> and then he said the same exact words that Daniel said in Daniel chapter 12. Jesus created Daniel. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, Jesus created. Uh, but I believe that happened somewhere around the middle of the tribulation too. So we're, we're, we're establishing three things now. The Antichrist will be present before the beginning of the seven years. He could be here today. He will break the covenant. He'll make a covenant and he'll break that covenant in the middle of the three and a half year period. And the witnesses will finish their witnessing in three and a half years. Now what, what, did, what did Jesus say the end would come? 
When the gospel is preached throughout the entire world, then the end will come. What happens in the middle of the three and a half year period of time? The witnesses are gone. They're no longer preaching the gospel. And boom, God pours out his bowls of wrath. Right. That is what real. But before that, there's a lot of bad things happening. I could go through them. I don't want to go through them at time. There's a lot of stuff that happens. That before he pours out his bowls. You got the the, the seals being un, unsealed. Or the, unscrolls the seal. I want to show you something. Because what we're talking about is that guy right there. The white horse? The white horse. You could have just said the white horse. I want to read something to you. Oh, <laughs> forgot, forgot a big part. <laughs> <laughs> so far everything I'm talking about has to do with Israel the Antichrist Israel okay where's the church I used to when I would preach on Daniel chapter 9 we go through my message was called where's the church because you won't find the church in Old Testament scriptures you might find something you can reference toward it. You won't find the church. So where is the church? Where are we? And who are we? Let's go through it. We're the believers. We are the believers in Christ Jesus. We are the ones who have been filled with His Holy Spirit. If you're the true church. If you're a member of the Church of Philadelphia, by the way, we don't have cards here, but being a card member of the First Southern Baptist Church of Yucca does not get you into the true church. Okay? Right. Nor does sitting here putting up with me talk every Sunday get you into the true church. What gets you into the true church is your confession and your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. It has nothing to do with door, his church attendance, although he does encourage that. Iron sharpens iron. Because if, 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 if it would, I would change the name of this church to the Church of Philadelphia. Because through the Church of Philadelphia, he said, I promise to keep you from the hour of trial that is coming against the entire world. And that's the only church as Jesus went through the church era that he said he would do anything because he would keep the true church. And the true church is looking for what? They're not looking for that Antichrist. They're looking for our great God and Savior, Jesus yeah. Christ. Right. Titus chapter 2. Amen. That's what we're to be looking for. But keep your eye out, because this guy may be lingering around. He'll be a nice guy. When you start seeing the whole world liking this guy, I believe that he's going to be a really nice guy coming from the north. <coughs> Why do I say that? Because I read the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 38. He's going to be a really nice guy, very charismatic, and very well <coughs> suited to put an entire world back together again. Keep your eyes out for some guy like that. And then try not to follow him. <laughs> so we are the bride of Christ. Remember Jesus went in to Jesus went in to a group of his disciples, and he was teaching them one day, and he said, this is over in John chapter 14. He says, So you believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, if this weren't true, I, I would tell you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. That was the exact same thing that a groom would say to the bride. Once the contract in the Jewish marriage had been signed, the, the groom would say to the bride, I'm going away to daddy's house. I'm going to build a room for you, but I'll be back and gather you unto myself. And then yes. for however long it takes him to build uh, that room, you know, we're making progress on the pantry, but it's slow. <laughs> it takes a while to build, and what if his back gives out like I did, you know? At least a year. At least a year. I don't know. <laughs> so Jesus made a promise. He says, I, I'm going to read this to you. But before he said this, he said, Lord, oh, 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 oh. 
Oh, Jesus says, I will come again and return you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So where's the church? The church is firmly in the hands of Jesus Christ. He is our groom. We are the bride. He's coming back to get us. Not only did he say he's coming back to get us, but he also said to the church of Philadelphia, I will keep you from the hour of trial that's coming against the whole world. These are good promises. But then the apostle Paul the Apostle Paul put it right down. He said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with that trumpet call of God, with a shout, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are left alive will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we forever be with the Lord. Amen. That was the Apostle Paul. But then a few, uh, one chapter over in chapter 5, verse 9, he said, said, For you, we, we are not called unto wrath, but called to receive salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So these two things aren't going together, are they? That, that thing called the Great Tribulation and this really neat time where we're looking for our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's going to be coming on the clouds, and who's going to call us out and say, Wait! Yes. <clears throat> When you hear your name, you're going to go. And if you're not, you have a problem. I would like to take such pride and know that everybody in this room is going. Amen. I, I, I would take that kind of pride. I joke about pride and arrogance and all that. In, in reality, it's a bad thing. But I would take pride in knowing that everybody here, like, wow, we even got Jim, you know? <laughs> I take pride in that. The church is going to be called out. That's what our name means, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church. Our very name says we're going to be called out. Now the question is, when? There's a troublesome scripture. I started this entire thing almost two months, three months ago. When I read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. If you'd pick up your bulletin. Because it can trip you up. With all the things I've said, it doesn't make sense that we're headed to a great tribulation, does it? A lot of people, a lot of Christians out there believe that. And by the way, it's not something you go to, you don't grab your gun and go shoot them, okay? Uh, everybody's allowed to have their own opinion. What, what you really want to make sure of that person who's messed up on their theology is that they love Jesus Christ. And, and don't have to shoot them in, in Pastor Wayne's name. Okay. <laughs> Listen to what Paul wrote to the Thessalonians. It's actually Second Thessalonians, but actually there were three Thessalonian letters because the first one responded to the Thessalonians chapter. The first Thessalonians actually refers to a, a previous letter. But to what we call Second Thessalonians two one through eight. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and are gathering together to him. Okay, what are we talking about here? We're talking about Jesus coming back and our, he's talking to the church, very clearly to the church, and our gathering together with him. You with me? We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled. There's a lot of trouble going on with the Thessalonians. They, they'd seen people um, die, believers die, and they wondered, did they miss the rapture? That's why... That's why Paul wrote back and said, no, by, not by any means, for the dead will rise first, and we who are left alive will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, so, so don't be troubled by that, by word of spirit, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day, that time will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, 
so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That kind of makes you think that we're going to have to see the revealing of the Antichrist before we are gathered together in his presence. Doesn't that make you think that? I see heads bobbing, yes. I would agree with that. That's what it is saying. At least that's our interpretation of it. I have just stood up here for about more time than you've really allotted me and shown you <laughs> that, that we're not part of that. We're not part of making that treaty. We're not part of that great tribulation that's coming our way. And there's a lot of stuff heading our way. And the question is, the question that's being asked is, are we up and out of here before that guy shows up? Yes. Okay, I believe we are. But, but let's stay with me for a minute because I don't like that word and. <clears throat> Let me read that. Let no one deceive you by any means. We're talking about the coming. Okay. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Remember I taught a whole series on that falling away. I said, don't let yourself be an apostate. Remember that? Whole series. I took it from here, but I stopped right there. Because I knew I had to go through all this other stuff to get to this end. Mm. To get to this end. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now I can even go so far as saying, I believe right now that the man of sin is here on planet earth. I can go so far as to say that we're going through uh, a period of time leading up to the great tribulation. I can go so far as to say that that uh, he might be even filled with, with the enemy at this point in time. I don't know. But this is what I call the actual revealing. Okay? That and, if you put another word, and then the man of sin is revealed, that son of perdition, we just got the word and, but if you put another word, T-H-E-N, after that, the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God, all this worship, so that he sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Again, when does that happen? In the middle of the tribulation. That's when he walks into this temple that's not built yet, proclaims himself to be God. Yeah. Okay? <coughs> so we're either out of there here by that point in time, or else all the other scriptures I've told you don't make any sense. For I will keep you from the hour of tribulation that's come against the whole wide world. Okay? Or we were not called unto wrath, but called to receive salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Nothing else is making any sense. Nor does it make any sense that we weren't mentioned in the, in the Daniel 77 prophecy. Because we're going to be here. Nor does it make any sense that, that God in Acts chapter 15 said, First I will take out a, a group of the Gentiles for myself. Remember that scripture? Acts chapter 15. Now, if we read on, we're going to explain this. Let's read on. Paul says, don't you remember? Do you not remember when I was still with you and I told you these things? Come on, guys, pay attention. And now you know what is restraining. So what's stopping that guy from coming? Well, something is restraining that from happening. What's stopping this man of perdition, this man of sin, from rising right now? And, notice, and, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Right. Read it, brother. He, little he, little H. Anybody see that? Little H? I, oh, you don't have a circle on yours like I put on mine. Little H. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he, capital H-E. Who do we know that's a capital H-E? Well, there's he, God, the Father. There's he, God, Jesus. And there's he, God, the Holy Spirit. Okay? All three are one. Okay? They're all God. There's not three gods. There's one God and three persons. And they're all got a capital H on their name. Yes. Only he who now restrains, the question was, we know who is restraining. Well, we didn't know, but now we do know. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. What happens when you take a whole bunch of 
Christians who have the Holy Spirit in their heart out of the way. He gets revealed. Because out goes the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit job is it's going to be here. The Holy Spirit will be here, don't get me wrong, during the Great Tribulation, saving saints. But they are not the church. I'm going to say this again. The church is the, is the bride of Christ. They get raptured. The Holy Spirit will return to earth with a different mission. Tribulation saints. And then the lawless one will be revealed after the he is taken out of the way. Yes. Open your Bible to Revelation. I'm going to finish this up real quick. Open your Bible to Revelation chapter 1. Uh, chapter, chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. Let me cover real quick what happened in chapters 1 through 3. John looks over and he sees this window opening up. We covered this. Okay. Behold, I looked and I saw what appeared to be a door in heaven. And I heard what sounded like, like a trumpet calling me. And instantly I was in the presence of the, of the thro around the throne of God. Right? Yes. And then he saw Jesus. This man described doesn't say Jesus, but he saw Jesus walking amongst the seven churches of Asia, okay? And he had something to say to each and every church, right? To the seven churches. Only when he got to the church of Philadelphia did he say anything that he was going to keep them from this hour of tribulation that's coming against the whole world. So he walked through these churches. I would say to you that this is a picture of the church age. You know why I say that? Because read chapter 4, verse 1. He's just gone through the walking through the churches. After these things, and I covered this last week, metatanta, metatanta in the Greek, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, come up here, and I will show you the things that must take place. Metatanta, after these things. After what? After the church age. Now it makes all kinds of sense, doesn't it? Flip over a couple pages. There's another scene in heaven where Jesus steps forth as the lamb that was slain. And he grabs the scroll. And the scroll has seals on it. And as Jesus starts unsealing the scroll that he's holding in his hand, the first thing that happens, chapter 6, verse 1. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come up here and see. And look and behold a white horse. See the white horse? He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. A lot of people think that's Jesus, right? Hey, nobody ever had to give Jesus any kind of crown. He, he's got one all on his own. In fact, the crowns that we get, we toss down before his throne. And he went on conquering and conquer. He went out conquering and to conquer. This guy's here to do damage. Let's take a look at the people he's riding with. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another fiery red horse, he's up there, went out and was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And, what pe and people should kill one another, and where and there was given to him a great sword. That's like war. Any any uh, saber rattling going on out there right now? <laughs> when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, "Come and see." So I looked, and it had a pair of scales in his hand. I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, "A quart of wheat." For a denarius. By the way, a denarius is a day's wages. Don't buy gold. They're just trying to sell you gold. Buy some food. Because that's what the main commodity is going to be here in a very short period of time. And three quarts of barley for a denarius. You can buy some barley a little cheaper. Because it's not good wheat. Okay? 
and do not harm the oil or the wine. And those, we'll get, I don't want to go there. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Open the sea. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was Death and Hades. Well, any time you got war and scarcity of food, old Death and Hades is going to come right in there, riding with the Antichrist. And power was given him over a fourth of the earth to kill with a sword, with hunger and death, and by the, by the beast of the earth. When's this guy come? Metatanta, Metatanta. After these things. After what things? After the church age. Okay? There's a story, we all know it pretty well, the story of, of Joseph. And in the story of Joseph, Joseph is seen as kind of a, a Christ figure. In fact, if we go through it, it took us a long, long time Wednesday night Bible study going through the story of Joseph over Genesis. Real interesting part, and it gets passed over a lot, but right after Joseph rose to his powerful throne, this Pharaoh gave him a wife. Her name was Aphanath. Remember her? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not much is mentioned about her, except they were getting ready to go through a time of good and plenty, you know, the, the white and the pink. <laughs> and Apanath, Apanath was probably in that time of good and plenty. No, no real mention of what happened to her during the time of famine, which represents what's coming at the world today. Except we're pretty sure that if that was Joseph's wife, it was in, she was in the... the the palace with the king. Yes. And that's a picture of the church, of Jesus coming back. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you will be also. And when, when we die, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. We go to be with Jesus. If we're here during the period of time when this guy is going to be coming right around the corner, we go to be with Jesus. if you're in the church of Philadelphia, you're out of here. Make sure you're in the church of Philadelphia. Yes. And all these scriptures say one other thing. I need you, Steve. That's what they say. All these scriptures say one other thing. Make sure your heart is right with Jesus Christ. Because there's no way out of here. There's the pain train or the main train. Last week we sung about the main train. Remember? <laughs> People get ready. There's a train coming. That's not a song for two now. There we go. This is a song I wrote. It was actually the last song stay I wrote just before they let me out of prison. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get both of them. Okay, so this is one of his CDs. It's on my CD. By the way, if anybody does not have a copy of my CD, I got some copies back there. You might let people know that I used to charge. I used to charge people for them, but sales were down. CD is just. Ah, play it, see. I know someone's coming. When's he coming? In a little while. I know. Someone's coming, and he's coming on a cloud. He's coming down in glory. He's in a tower, he's in the story. I know someone's coming. When's he coming? In a little while. Well, I put my hands together. And I began to pray. I asked the Lord to help me. Well, along my very way. I asked him, come along, Lord. Can the world keep going on and on? He gave me back this song to sing. 
Because our hearts, our lives, our very worship is upon you, Lord. And we know, Lord, that you gave us a promise. You gave us promises in many ways. And you're not going to leave us to go through any kind of wrath because you're coming here to get us. And I know, Lord, I know that someone's coming. Come on, church, when's he coming? Thank you. 